Elizabeth Holmes was an attractive 19-year-old entrepreneur-to-be who went to Stanford, dropped out of her chemical engineering degree after one year and said she was going to change the world by starting up a company which ended up being called Theranos. The company was founded to stop patients from undergoing the trauma of blood tests where the blood is taken from the vein. Instead, claimed Elizabeth Holmes, you would be able to take a few uh, drops of blood from your thumb or your finger, from a pinprick, and hundreds of tests could be run on those few drops of blood, giving you the whole gamut of uh, diagnostics that, that you would get from blood tests. This was, in the old-fashioned Silicon Valley sense, vaporware. There was no technology to do this, not at the beginning of their journey and not at the end of their journey. And anyone who had really looked carefully at the technology would have known that because uh, this young woman was compelling and charismatic and managed to uh, pull a lot of people who were famous in their own right into her spell, that suddenly everyone suspended disbelief. They didn't ask the right questions. So one of the things that I think is important is that we, we always ask the hard questions, sometimes the stupid basic questions. How are you going to run 200 tests on two drops of blood? As soon as you just start asking questions like, okay, well, how many cells are there in there anyway? And how are we going to get those to, to flow around a machine? As soon as you start asking the most basic questions, the technology falls apart. It becomes obvious that this is not real. Even the most basic due diligence on the part of some of these investors would have made a huge difference. If they had just asked some basic questions about what does blood testing involve? What volumes do you need in order to conduct various types of tests? It would have become completely obvious, I'm confident. But of course, you can't just ask the entrepreneur. You can't just ask Elizabeth Holmes or whoever else is the person. You have to go out and ask the competitors, ask people with something to lose, ask independent consultants. How does their technology work? Uh, what problems do they have? If you can see the problems they're having, that will flag potential problems that the new technology, the new company, is going to have when it's developing its own technology. You, that's, that's what we get trained to do as journalists. And that's, I think that kind of skepticism can help entrepreneurs to do better. You have to use your own critical faculties. That's why people are successful. Not because they're just following the herd, but because they're using their own critical faculties. And that means being prepared to trust your own judgment, develop your judgment, trust your judgment, and then walk away when it doesn't feel right to you.